Welcome to video log 5 on agility. This video will be looking at the 5105 drill, carrying out a pre and post practice comparison of the drill and discussing the changes that have occurred, and then reflecting on how this may inform coaching practice. Agility is defined as the ability to change direction rapidly without losing balance using a combination of strength, power, and neuromuscular coordination. Now, this next footage is of me performing the 5105 drill for the first time. And in comparison to the last athlete, you'll certainly notice uh, a difference in technique and performance, which we'll talk through in a moment. Now, I'm not training like this anymore. So most of my training is um, slow, steady state in the gym, uh, on a bike or, or running. So I'm not used to training like this. I start in a very upright stance. There's a lack of lean forward and triple extension to generate force from the floor. There's quite a bit of knee valgus occurring as I turn and spin all the way around. I'm in a very upright position here and start slowing down quite early. And this will lead to a fairly poor performance of the drill overall. So after that first attempt, I stopped and had to think about the performance of the drill and watched back the video footage of my own performance and then tried to make some immediate changes. So the first one was to start in a much lower stance to be able to push off and not waste time dipping down. There seems to be a difference in the way I turn. There's less knee valgus occurring here. Um, there's a lack of knee drive, which is always the case with my sprinting at the moment. So I need to get my knee up higher. Um, I start to turn around early again, but I'm also, my torso is twisting around to face the front. So I'm slowing down and turning earlier to go into the cone. I do seem to get quite low to the cone. And then I make a point of accelerating through that middle cone to ensure I don't lose time slowing down. This model indicates that change of direction consists of technique, leg muscle qualities, and straight line sprinting speed. Now in terms of the first performance that I did and the second performance of the 5105 drill, we can see that there is a little bit of a difference in technique. And this came in a very short period of time through the use of looking at video footage of myself and reflecting on my performance. I then considered what little differences I could make and I ultimately made a change to my technique. And this is highlighted to me that I may start using video footage a little bit more uh, in my coaching practice to try and turn my athletes into reflective practitioners. So I went away and carried out some single leg drills initially to try and develop glute strength and the ability to absorb force on single leg in a, in a lateral movement uh, and to prevent knee valgus from occurring um, that we saw in, in the turn during my 5105 drill. Um, the other objective of these exercises was to try and develop the rate of force development in a lateral movement um, to really generate force from the cone and push off uh, very quickly. Uh, I did some low cutting sprint drills as well uh, to try and practice getting low to the floor and then cutting and moving in the opposite direction quickly as per the 5105 drill. So after carrying out those drills and practicing the 5105 drill over a couple of weeks, um, we can see a difference in my technique here. So I get down nice and low. And there's a conscious lean to the side that I'm going to be moving towards to get me in a better position to push off. Here I don't spin round and there's a much straighter line from shoulder to foot, put me in a better position to drive away from the cone. I consciously try and swing that leg around to take a bigger first step on the turn. And I actually almost overbalance here, but that puts me in a much better position to start accelerating a little bit quicker. And we can see that there's a, a much straighter line here in terms of the triple extension, although still not perfect by any means. Uh, there's still an issue with the, the knee being relatively low, and that's an ongoing problem with my sprint technique. Uh, I seem to be decelerating a little bit later this time, um, and I'm bringing my chest round to the front, so I'm turning and getting low. But this is the main one where I'm in a nice low accelerating position due to the fact that I'm trying to swing my right leg now all the way round to take a big first step to accelerate through to the cone. In summary, I believe that my improvement in performance of this new drill was mainly down to observing video footage of myself, reflecting on performance and making the necessary changes at the different phases of the drill. In terms of future coaching practice, I will therefore initially look to establish sound technique in my athletes through the effective use of video footage. However, this may only be appropriate if the athlete has some level of competence and knowledge of the technique and may not be appropriate for a complete beginner.